So here I'm going to show you how to work out from this information here. That's the voltage at the start of charging, voltage at the end of charging, and the total amount of power we put into the battery. I'm going to show you how you can work out the capacity of the battery from that. And you do that using a formula. So we have the 20.83 volts at the start. That corresponds to 3.472 volts for each cell in the battery. That's just that divided by 6. Similarly, that voltage at the end corresponds to 3.558 volts. Then you know the power from the solar panel and the rated capacity of the battery. Then we have to work out what each of these voltages corresponds to in terms of how charged the battery is. And you use a lookup table for that. This is the lookup table for slow charging a battery like this and then waiting after you've charged it to see what the voltage is at rest without that surface charge. So we have a lot of the voltages here and the implied state of charge in the battery. So you see at 3.379 volts it'll only be 2.752% charged, whereas when you get up to 4.2 volts here, as soon as you hit that 4.2 volts you'll be 85.661% charged, then you keep it at 4.2 volts for a few hours and you will get up to the full 100% charge. So then we need to work out for each of these voltages what's the state of charge of the battery. Unfortunately these voltages sit in between here so we're actually very close to this voltage here but this voltage is in between those two. So we need a way of working out intermediate voltages and what the state of charge is there and to do this I created the polynomial equation which shows the continuous graph of voltage against charge. I've done this through a simple website. So this website, you put in voltages against charges here and it creates the graph of the dots and then it'll create various polynomials to try to approximate that as closely as possible. So I've created a polynomial of degree 11 because that seems to fit this the best. You then take the coefficients of this polynomial, which are this, so that these coefficients describe the whole of that line as an equation. Put those back into Excel. I've got those coefficients here and they correspond to these x being voltage. So then put that equation in here. You can see the equation here. Each of these coefficients multiplied by the voltage. Well, is C6, so it's the first coefficient of constant plus that times the voltage plus that times the voltage squared see C6 squared here, plus the next one times voltage cubed, all the way along, and you get, at the end of it, these implied charges. So 6.9% is the implied charge of 3.472 volts, 14.8% implied charge of 3.558 volts, so the total amount we've charged it is that minus that, 7.9%. get the total capacity, we need to divide 384.7 watt hours by 7.9%. And we get 4,860.2 watt hours in total. And that's actually 91.7% of its rated capacity when new. And this is four years later. So I think that's doing quite well. The other thing to think of is actually we didn't get quite all of this power into it. So there might be some losses in terms of heat. So we might not have got fully that into it, which means there's maybe slightly lower total capacity than 92% of its original. But still, I think it's low 90s, which isn't bad. That still means that this battery has an incredible amount of power that it can store in it, and I'm sure that's going to be enough to power my boat along. Right, for the next video, we've got this battery management system here, which I'm going to install, and that's going to make sure that those six different groups of cells are all equalised in voltage. So I'll show you how to do that in the next video.